Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's episode, we're going to be going through the changes and the plan changes the government have announced to reform leaseholds here in England. The aim for these reforms is to make buying or extending a lease agreement easier, faster, fairer and cheaper. And with one part of the reform already rolled out in June, let's understand what this means and what the government's future plans are and how this affects current and future leaseholders. I'm Cosan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So just going back to the basics quickly, let's understand what a leasehold is. When buying a property in England, depending on the property, you can either be a freeholder or a leaseholder. A freeholder is straightforward, it means you completely own the property and the land that it sits on. A leasehold, on the other hand, is when you own the property for a set length of time, which is known as a term of the lease. Once the term of the lease runs out, the property transfers to the individual or company that owns the land, i.e. the freeholder. Leaseholds are more common when buying flats or apartments that sit within the complex. The number of leasehold houses has grown recently in recent years, especially when so many government new build schemes that I've already mentioned in this channel focus on selling through a developer who will often keep ownership of the freehold. In 2017, the government have promised to put an end to poor leasehold practices following several accounts from existing leaseholders who have mentioned crazy price increases to their ground rent and how it can be painfully expensive when it comes to extending the lease. So how are these reforms meant to help? So it was announced in 2021 that the leasehold reform would be tackled through two pieces of legislation. The first being something called the Leasehold Reform Bracket Ground Rent Act 2022, which has now since come in force as of the 30th of June 2022. And the second piece, which doesn't actually have a name yet, let's just call it Future Legislations, which is suggested to be introduced in the years 2023 and 24. And this also covers a number of important changes. So let's go through these one by one. Before we get into it, be sure to hit the subscribe button to get my latest videos. A number of my viewers aren't actually subscribed to this channel, so let's see if we can change that. Starting with the Leaseholder Reform Ground Rent Act 2022, which as I've already mentioned, came into law as of the 30th of June, 2022. The purpose of the act is to put an end to ground rent for new qualifying and long lease residential properties here in England. For those that are unaware, for those with long leases, so these are leases exceeding 21 years, you normally would have to pay a rent to the freeholder to live on the land where your property sits in, and this is known as ground rent. The typical cost of ground rent does depend on location and size and type of the property, but generally it is known to be a couple of hundred pounds per year, and this cost can be fixed for your term or escalating. Now this has been a key issue with the leasehold system as there isn't any rules or regulation when it comes to charging ground rent. Some leaseholders have doubling clauses in their lease contracts, which in one example, which is quoted by which.com, found that an annual ground rent which started off at 295 pounds in 2008 would reach almost 9,500 pounds in the year 2058. Not only is this a crazy expensive increase, but it also traps the leaseholders as these properties then become very difficult to sell on. These changes from the Leaseholder Reform Act means that from the 30th of June this year, it will not be possible for landlords of regulated leases to require leaseholders to pay any form of ground rent. It also bans freeholders from charging any admin fees that are also associated from collecting ground rent too. This ban on ground rent will also apply to retirement homes but this will not come into force until after the 1st of April 23. If ground rent is demanded as part of your new lease, it can only be charged at one peppercorn, which, to cut a long story short, essentially equates to nothing. So just to quickly summarise, these changes should only apply to anyone signing a new lease through an extension or buying a leasehold property that is a regulated lease and has a term length of 21 years or more. However, there are some caveats and these changes will not apply if you have an existing lease. However, the government are due to look at this issue as this is an area of continuing reform. If you manage to get a voluntary extension to your lease, this rule will only apply to the proportion of years on your lease that is agreed after the 30th of June 2022. This change also doesn't cover anyone that has gone through a statutory lease extension who have a business lease, which kind of makes sense as this is really 
a residential reform, a community housing lease, home finance plan lease, and right to buy arrangements. For more information on the Ground Rent Reform Act, I will link the official government publication in the description box down below. Now moving to the next part of the reform, which currently has no deadline as to when this needs to be delivered, but the suggestion is that it would be during 2023 and 24. So let's go through them. The first one is the abolishment of marriage value. So marriage value is an extra charge leaseholders will have to pay if they decide to extend their lease and their current lease has a term of 80 years or less remaining. To give you an example, let me quickly show you what the typical costs are when it comes to extending a lease. As you can see here, there are quite a few costs to consider, with the most notable one being the premium for a lease extension. If this extension is done when your current lease term is 80 years or less, the marriage value essentially acts as an add-on to this premium. So this new legislation will remove marriage value from all lease extension calculations. The next change is the extension amount to leases. So currently, leaseholders of houses can only extend their lease once by a 50 year period, while leaseholders of a flat can extend as often as they would like fly, 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 by a 90 year period. This change will allow all leaseholders to have the right to extend their lease by a 990 year period. Now this will be truly beneficial as a depreciating lease term has negative effects on the value of your property. However, by getting a lease term that is as long as 919 years, it's pretty much like having a freehold in the sense that the ownership is permanent for your lifetime and for the next couple of generations. Another change is that the government have also promised the introduction of a statutory leaseholder calculator that will determine the value it should be for the leaseholder to pay the freeholder when it comes to the cost of extending, as well as how much it would be to buy the freehold off them. Now this will be hugely beneficial as the current process typically requires a full on negotiation between you and the freeholder to determine the price with the freeholder having most of the bargaining power. So the introduction of a calculator should save on time and money by clearly highlighting a fair price. And lastly, there are proposals to make changes to the process when it comes to collective enfranchisement and common hold. So the government have completed a consultation exercise to make changes to both collective enfranchisement, which is essentially a process which allows leaseholders in a building to join forces and buy the freehold from the landlord. And they also are planning to make changes to the common hold, which is similar to what I've just mentioned, but it's when you collectively own the building your flat sits in from the outset. So it's slightly different from leaseholds and freeholds. The eventual aim is to make both of these methods easier and more accessible, and once more official news becomes available on these topics, I'll be sure to let you know. So those are the planned reforms for leaseholds. I definitely agree that it is a step in the right direction as it definitely goes a long way to what I've always considered a broken leasehold system. And although it does make leaseholds more attractive, I do feel it is a huge misstep from the government not to include existing leases in the ground rent abolishment that they've just introduced. And yes, although they have promised to look into it, the timeline on this hasn't been set, so who knows if and how long it will take, which just doesn't seem fair as it adds unnecessary confusion for current leaseholders who aren't affected by the zero ground rent change on what to do when it comes to selling or extending if they're considering to do it in the near future. One really helpful resource for anyone who does feel that they are in an awkward position, you can reach out to the leaseholders charity who may be able to provide additional guidance and clarity. Of course, that is it for this week's episode. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on the government's reforms and how and if it affects you. Also, if you did find this video incredibly useful, I would appreciate if you smash that like button. That is wonders for the growth of this channel. And remember, if you want to keep up to date with my future content, hit the subscribe button too. See you later. Bye.